Welcome back to the Aracopia Show. Today we're going to talk about preparedness food math. So the average person eats 2,000 pounds of food every single year. For a family of five, that is 10,000 pounds of food every single year. Now lately I've been on this little bit of a, I've got protein on the mind, so meat protein in particular. And I looked looked up, uh, you know, what you should have as kind of a minimum of protein. And the best information that I found is 0.8 grams of protein per, per one kilogram of your body weight. So me, like I'm a bigger man, so don't laugh, but I'm 100 kilograms, so I'm a 220 pounder myself. So I'm, you know, I'm tall built, I'm not a bodybuilder, uh, but you know, I could stand to lose a few pounds type of thing. But so 100 kilograms, let's, let's go based on that. Like it would be, and for, for my boys as well, they are young, but when they get to be teenagers, you want to feed them the best food that you possibly can so that their brain develops, so that their muscles develop and get big, so that their bones are dense, uh, so that they're taller, smarter, faster, stronger. Literally, it all comes down to your food. Now, our quality of food is going down in the West. Uh, the With inflation, the prices are going up and the quality is going down, essentially, is what I've noticed. So there's uh, this funny thing in the United States that they're saying on their new food pyramid that lucky charms are more important to eat than steak. And uh, if you believe that, you know, I've got a oceanfront property in the middle of the Canadian prairies to sell you. But let's talk about protein. What do you actually need and how do you get it, right? It's 0.8. So essentially for a 100 kilogram man, a 220 pound man, he needs to eat 80 grams of protein. This give or take equals, uh, when you talk about meat, about one pound of meat. And it varies for the different meats. So ground beef maybe has a little bit less protein. Deer and goat meat are a little bit more leaner. They have a little bit more protein. Like for every pound of deer, it's about 110 grams of protein. Same for goats. For ground beef, it's about 60 to 80, depending on how lean it is, of protein or 60 to 80 grams of protein for every pound of ground beef. So just for rough rough estimates, let's say a person should eat a pound, okay? Like 80 grams for me would be about the minimum. I try to eat more than that. So one pound a day for myself, that is 365 pounds a year. For a family of five, that's five pounds of meat every single day or 1,825 pounds of meat a year. Okay, so for a goat or a deer, a goat and a deer dress out at 50 pounds of meat. So a full-size deer, full-size goat, after butchering, uh, you get about 50 pounds of meat off of that. So for myself, to feed myself the minimum amount of recommended protein just on goat or deer meat, I need seven goats per year. That's just for me. Or for a family of five, I need 35 goats a year for my family, or 35 deer a year. So that's about three deer or three goats per month for a family of five. Uh, I was watching some old Western show or something, and they were uh, traveling in, uh, you know, the, the Wild West when they came to North America on a wagon. And, of course, hungry, and, and the man there said... Uh, I'm going to go try to hunt a deer. And he got one. And he brought the deer back to the wagon. And for his family of four, he said, well, this should feed us for uh, uh, almost a week. And that kind of got me thinking. That put me on this protein kick. And yeah, that's that's actually about right. Right, 35 deer a year for a family of five, if that's your only source of protein again. For beef, if you were just to survive on beef, the average cow dresses out it's about 500 pounds, they say like 400-ish in retail cuts and then up to 600, but the average cow, let's say 500 pounds. So for me, just for me, I have to eat three quarters of a cow a year, just for me. For a family of five, that's like three to four cows every single year. 
Okay, now ground beef is $5 a pound, uh, would be the cheapest I've seen it lately. It's usually about 6 and it goes up from there, right? Ground beef is the kind of cheapest form of beef. You could, I'm not going to talk about the price of ribs and steak and roasts and sirloin and T-bone steaks and things. Just ground. Okay, so three to four cows a year. So let's say four cows a year. So that's 2,000 pounds of give or take uh, beef to provide beef protein for your family. Again, if you're not getting it from any other sources. That is just in your lowest form ground beef. If you can find a deal at five dollars a pound, that's ten grand a year now for your family of five. Ten grand a year for ground beef. Fish, uh, fish would be about let's say in an aquaponic system, you you get like a pound and a half, two pound fish. Maybe get a pound of fillets off of them. So to get my protein a day just off of fish. I need to eat one fish a day or 365 a year, or that's like over 1,800 fish a year for a family of five. The average chicken uh, that's butcher ready is two to three pounds. And uh, essentially, I, I worked it out that I'd have to get, just to get my protein off of chicken, at least a half a chicken a day for myself. That's 182 a year. Or for a family of five, that's 900 chickens a year, just for protein off of chickens. Now, you can get your protein in other sources. So my opinion on meat is that you want your meat to be healthy, right? And we eat the meat. So you want the best kind of meat. You want free-ranging, grass-fed, you know, pasture, pasture pork, pastured goats, you know, grass-fed beef is kind of your best, and, and treat the animal so they have a great life and they're the healthiest animal. They're getting all their nutrition off of really great feed, and then we eat those animals and get all that nutrition. Now, we should be eating probably a lot of the animal's organs as well. I guess, uh, uh, like beef liver, we, we enjoy eating raw beef liver, for our health, my wife calls it a natural multivitamin. It's got so much good stuff in there, but you can look into that yourself. Um, eggs. If you're just getting your protein just solely off of eggs, I would need to eat for minimum 13 eggs a day or 4,700 eggs a year. This is for a family of five, 65 eggs a day or 23,000 eggs a year. Again, if that's only where you get your protein from. So I looked it up, the average egg is 100 grams and it that egg contains six grams of protein. So I did the math on that. I need a minimum of 80 uh, grams of protein. So that's how I got those numbers. So for a family of five, 23,725 eggs a year. Now, obviously you're gonna eat a variety of things. You're going to eat goat, deer, pork, fish, beef, eggs, and then uh, some plant-based stuff. Now, our favorite, uh, I guess, plant-based protein uh, source is oats. We eat a fair bit of oats. And oats are very, very good for you. They're, uh, for every pound of oats, you get 45 grams of protein out of that pound of oats. But again, if I was just to get protein off of oats myself, I'd need to eat two pounds of oats a day to get my minimum protein. So that's 730 pounds a year, or for a family of five, 3,650 a year, pounds of a year. Now, like I said, you want variety, but this kind of, these numbers put it in perspective for, for me. It's kind of the amount you actually have to produce. It's kind of crazy to think about. Now that's just the protein that I was talking about. So 365 pounds a year of meat, essentially, uh, give or take for the average person. You know, that's 1,800, I believe. Yeah, 1,825 pounds of meat per year. Now your family of five needs to eat 
10,000 pounds of food a year is kind of the average. So the Canada Food Guide, the new one, it's kind of really simple and it's better than it used to be, right? The old food guide that I grew up with was like, eat bread, eat lots and lots of bread and lots of grains. And <laughs> it's funny. It's it's actually hilarious. But now at least their new one, it's essentially just a picture of a plate and it says half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables the other half should be like clean protein so meat and eggs and dairy and and um, plant-based protein and you know fats and things so it's actually a little bit better of a food guide than we used to have but essentially half of your plate fruits and vegetables so fruits and vegetables are primarily water content anywhere from like 80 to 96 percent water content like spinach i think is 96 percent water there's not much in it so for me when we freeze dry spinach it goes down to like nothing right it looks like there's nothing left but you're getting lots of your water in that food so if half half of your um your food is fruits and vegetables. A big portion of that is the water content in your food. But how are you going to eat, especially in Canada, a uh, thousand pounds of fruits and vegetables per person per year? That's 5,000 pounds of fruits and vegetables, right? Now, in Canada, we can do root crops and store them over the winter. So potatoes and beets and carrots and things. But for eight months of the year, we can't really grow things outside. So that's where I put a high importance on, on the greenhouse that I built. So the greenhouse is, you know, people say, oh, that's a huge greenhouse. Well, I haven't got a great growing system system in place yet. Uh, once I kind of have all, it all fine-tuned, it's going to produce more than we consume, you know, by quite a bit once it's, you know, really well used space in there. But, you know, you can do things like uh, get yourself a little 8 by 12 backyard greenhouse and that'll supplement a little bit for a few things for you, you or your family, but you're not going to come anywhere cr close to producing enough. If you live in the city, um, you are you can do a little raised flower bed, something like that. You are not going to produce enough kind of anywhere close to 5,000 pounds of good fruits and vegetables for your family of five. But any little bit helps, right? Uh, fats and things, you're going to get some of that from the clean meat protein you're going to get and the eggs and the dairy as well. Um so essentially for us in our household, we just try to eat lots of meat, lots of fat, um, a little bit of good dairy, and then fruits and vegetables. And then for our carbohydrates, it's like potatoes, uh, root crops, things like that that we grew. And then a little bit of rice and pastas and things like that. And, you know, that's that's kind of your best, best diet, right? Um, and I actually noticed this. So if I eat uh, that recommended minimum protein, um, you know, I, I feel good when I eat protein. I feel good when I eat fruits and vegetables as well. But protein, I get, you know, I can feel my muscles like needed, my body needed it. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to like build mass. So if you want your, your children to be big and strong and they're exercising or let alone a bodybuilder but the amount of food that a bodybuilder eats it's uh it's incredible like uh, the amount of eggs and meat and proteins and carbs that they eat like if you actually want to build build your body up build like a big human being right so this that was kind of minimum stuff but uh i want you to think you are literally going to have to produce this stuff for yourself i don't see another way around it so we got some harvest right home freeze dryers right and when it was just my wife and I and we were coming from the city you know we'd find deals and freeze dry them and put some food away but when you start to get into looking at the poundage of food that you need like pounds of meat like hundreds of pounds thousands of pounds freeze drying doesn't make a lot of sense in that case so for me you went we went from freeze drying and then the realization that no, you actually have to have homesteading and farming and production 
ongoing sustainable production to get that amount of food on an ongoing basis. So I'm uh, thinking for long term, my whole life, uh, whether things just get a little bit bad in the world or catastrophically bad, uh, that's the right scenario. So before you buy a freeze dryer, I, I'd suggest build a chicken coop. You know, I'd suggest get out of town and uh, get yourself some land. And again, when you're getting some land, like some people think an acre is a lot or six acres is a lot, you can do some things on on that, like a like, uh, big garden and things like that. But for your poundage of meat protein and things, you're not going to have a closed in system. You need enough land with enough pasture with enough grassland on to have enough animals on just for your family let alone producing more than you consume and then on top of that like where I live we have to bale up feed for the grass-fed animals like bale up good grassland so like part half of my land's pasture the other half is like feed for the winter and if you just have an acre or six acres or ten acres or or something that's not really enough to get enough meat protein like um, like I said the average family if you're just getting protein from chicken meat you need 900 chickens a year if it's just from goats 35 goats a year just for your family right so I'd suggest getting enough land that you can kind of make a closed loop homestead system and how much land is that um, I'm just going to throw this out there, but 80 acres is a nice number. That's that's nice. You can get more animals than your family needs and more feed than your animals need, and you have enough room to do all, all of this stuff, right? Um, enough wildlife kind of land that uh, the deer are going to come onto your property. Uh, you can plant lots of trees. You can have shelter belt. You can have privacy. Um you won't have neighbors complaining. You situate yourself in the middle of it type of thing. Um, and that's enough to do pastured pork and, you know, uh, mixed animals in the pasture, pastured pork, goats, uh, a few cows, a dairy operation, enough for a barn or two. You got some hayland. You got multiple pastures, enough space for corrals, enough place to do, you know, chicken tractors or just large chicken runs, things like that, um, to make a closed system homestead. Another thing, so potatoes are very easy to grow, so learn how to grow potatoes. So if you can, you know, supplement just a little bit of your your diet with potatoes, maybe a half a pound a day per person. So if it's a half a pound of potatoes per day, um, per person that's still a thousand pounds of potatoes a year you have to grow right a thousand pounds of potatoes so that's still you're not going to do it in raised beds kind of thing you need need a little bit of space to do that and that's just half a pound a day now you want to uh, i'm just i'm not just wanting to be prepared and just survive i would like to like thrive and especially with young boys it's it's got me i want them to be smart and tall and good bone uh, density, large muscles, uh, and lots of energy, I want to feed them the best that I can. I don't want to just feed them potatoes and rice. They are literally not going to develop. Now, with the food that we have that's all fake, essentially, and especially with inflation, food prices go up and essentially quality comes down, that unfortunately the future for humans is going to be and this is all because of the food people's iq is going to go down their brain is literally not going to develop because literally they are not getting the nutrition they're going to be shorter their bones are going to be weaker they're going to have less muscle and they're going to have more fat so if you look around that's kind of unfortunately what's happening Right when the food system, like the the lowest form of food and the cheaper food, is what people eat, and it's all sugar and corn syrup and soy and uh, oils like canola oil instead of butter and things, and it's a pretty terrible diet that we have. So I would go as far to say that uh, the young people today aren't going to live as long as their 
their parents, right? So we had, you know, uh, lots of technology and good things in the world, and it increased our lifespan a lot, right? Uh, kind of an abundance of everything. And then in this decline, everything's getting faker and cheaper and lower quality and too expensive that people can't afford things. The quality is going to go down and the life expectancy, I think, is actually going to go down for most people, unfortunately. Now, they're saying that the average family of four in Canada uh, sp spends $16,000 a year on groceries. So for a family of five, like I have, it's that's $20,000 a year on groceries. Now, the average family of five eats 10,000 pounds a year. So at $20,000, they're saying $2 a pound. Well, I just told you the lowest form of ground beef is $5 a pound. Um, like a banana uh, in Canada is 89 cents a pound with the peel on. And then for fruit, it goes anywhere up to $17 for a pound for berries in the off-season type of thing. So I don't know where they're getting this $2 a pound from. I guess things like potatoes, junk food, cereals, anything, any packaged food product uh, that people buy, right? Um, maybe you can do 20000 a year. But if you want to be eating you know, more than your minimum protein and you want some of the better proteins. So, you know, okay cuts of meat, a variety of things, fish, like I, salmon, I believe in where I'm, I'm at is $25 a pound for salmon or $25 a kilogram. Either way, it's a little bit more than $2, right? Um, so people that only spend $20,000 a year on groceries for their family, I don't think they're getting the very good quality foods. If you want anything better than that, you're going to be spending quite a bit more than that, unfortunately. Now, why is homesteading and doing things yourself important? So with if you are in the city, in the system, and you uh, are an employee, you have a job, there's a withholding tax, your tax is taken away from you, and then with after-tax dollars, then you go spend groceries. So literally for you to buy $20,000 worth of groceries, you have to make close to $30,000 to buy that $20,000 worth of groceries. So with that in mind, homesteading and doing things for yourself, you get uh, a better quality meat, more food, it's more sustainable, you live closer to the land, there's no withholding tax, and you know it's there's there's money in it it's not like it's free doing doing things for yourself but it is cheaper in the long run so it's a lot of work and time and resources to get infrastructure set up so barn greenhouse the initial land chicken coop fencing corral panels um, tractor baling equipment things like that but on, on an ongoing basis it uh, makes it for your family and your immediate community you get better quality food more of it at a cheaper price and that's that's the way to do it so let me know what you think about think about that if you have uh, kind of gone through your nutritional needs um, if you have done those exercises figured out exactly how much food that you need and what types of different food and where are you going to get it from because it is an obscene amount that we all consume right now if you're stuck in the city um, moving forward again wages aren't going to keep up with inflation wages aren't going to keep up with the price of food the quality of food is going to keep going down and if you're stuck in there it's you're going to eat the bugs and the lab grown tumor meat and that's actually going to be a treat the majority of your protein if you're lucky enough to even get the minimum is going to come from soy and other fake things that aren't necessarily good for you so it's a rat race and it's hard to get out but i suggest you work really hard and and do your best to get out because the the humans that are going to develop now the children that are going to develop are going to be the ones or you know, be the best, are going to be the ones that get the best quality food. They're going to be the smartest, the biggest, the brightest, the, the strongest, the tallest, have the least amount of problems and health issues, right? The amount of health issues that we all have in society now, it's all from your food, or a big portion of it is your food.
So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about that. And we will talk to you all next time. Take care.